Uh, right now I'm working on uh, Gen 2 Pokemon badges, just like those ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm working on a portal-themed coffee table. Oh, very cool. Very cool. And so what um, what kind of stuff are you guys hoping to pick up today, What to learn what? Well, you just there's a lot of stuff that goes unseen. And just It's good to get uh, ideas flowing. Uh, new materials, stuff like that, you know? Stuff, Things you wouldn't some, think some of. Some you wouldn't think of using. You know, some mold or something they put on there, you know, some plastic resin they use. Okay, we are done with the, the long boring slideshow. So, do we have a microphone? I think we do have a microphone. We can have do you people, guys have any questions? Well, we can have people line up at the mic. I, I will say that um, we are going to be pressed for time because we do have a panel coming up after us. Um, so if we could limit it to one question per person, I would really appreciate that. Um, and there's the We'll all be around after, too. We'll, oh, yeah, we'll right. scoot out of here. So if you find us out there, we'll answer questions. And, and, before, and before we leave, I, we can, we'll give you our Facebook and Twitter handles. And I love fielding questions on Twitter and Facebook and, and sharing. So oh, um, do do we, hey, Bill, do you have the URL for the download code? Yes, actually, uh, let me yell that out right now while people are still paying attention to me. Um, and it's on this thing. So I made a, a uh, I put all this information into a PDF and I put it, if you go to tiny.cc slash prop making guide, all one word, it'll open this PDF and there's a bunch of information in there and I'll be updating that every six months, maybe, I don't know. And it'll get updated, don't worry. And if anybody follows us on our Facebook, Twitter, etc., we'll post all the links up there as well. Exactly, yes. Okay. Or just Google Matt Munson for all my tutorials. Yeah. Okay. Okay, one more time. Tiny.cc slash prop making guide. All one word. Okay. Is this on? Yes. Um, my question is not so much for like guns or armor or that, but do you have any tips for making realistic body parts, such as like elf ears or something like that, that are easy to. Are you a sculptor? Wear? Do you know how to sculpt? I haven't, but I like to learn. For something like a prosthetic like that, um, I would I would get a form, either a cast of my ear. I'll, I'll specifically talk about ear. I would mold my ear or find like a, a wig head that had a decent looking ear on it, sculpt something out of clay, like to get some Siobhan soft or something. Does Michael's have Siobhan? No. Okay. Non-sulfuric clay. Non-sulfuric clay. Get some non-sulfuric clay, um, and then I would mold it in silicone and cast it in probably silicone also. Or maybe a urethane. It's that what you're describing isn't the, the easiest thing. Um, there's also places online that sell prefab elf ears. Um, but actually, that like that strikes me as a great project to cut your teeth on sculpting, molding, and casting because it's nice and small. It's not super detailed, not super complex. But just, just get oil, basically. Yeah. One of the places we all go for mold making stuff is a place called Smooth On. And SmoothOn has a, a fantastic website because they've got all of their tutorials for all of their products on there. So if you go to uh, one of their things that's life casting silicon, they'll have videos and photos and they'll say, here is how you use it. Here's 30 steps in a step-by-step process on how to mold your hand, your ear, your whatever. And then they have a lot of stuff like that on there. So um, check out SmoothOn. That'll definitely be a great place to start. Thank you very much. Thanks for your question. More for Harrison. Um, I was wondering, how did you learn to do the uh, circuit board design and the uh, Arduino stuff? Um, mostly forums, actually. I kind of I went out online and uh, I found Arduino forums. I found circuit design forums. Uh, I dug, dug through the forums on Batch PCB and SparkFun. And um, anything that I did took me about uh, you know two weeks of solid just reading before I actually started designing these things. Um, it, that's really the best thing I can recommend. I'm not that great with the code as far as Arduino is concerned, but I can do the hardware side of it really well. Um, your first couple things are going to be a little, like my first few boards were really bad, and I had to solder extra jumpers on, and it was kind of janky, but it, it came out in the end. Um, the forums are the best places to go, because those guys, SparkFun especially. Um, have you ever heard of that website? Yeah, SparkFun.com. They have a lot of electronics kits. They have a lot of things that will teach you about how to work in Eagle, which is the uh, layout editor. Um, and the, if you can buy a sort of pre-packaged kit that will teach you the basics of soldering, will teach you the basics of programming, um, that's really a good starting place to go to. Thanks. No problem. Hi, um, Hi. So I just wanted to ask, um, in general, I know you guys talk about 
and using your shops to your garages, and that's all well and good, but what do you suggest for someone who lives in a one-bedroom apartment in New York City as far as what to use as uh, space? Because I don't have anywhere to do any of this work without mm -hmm. killing myself. Get a drop off. Dead serious. I've worked yeah, out of my apartment. Get a drop off. Yeah. And a box fan for your window. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can really work anywhere. I think the limitations that we talked about here, like safety really, is your main limitation. Like, you need, you need a cross breeze if you're painting, if you're doing Bondo. Bondo stinks to high hell, so you're going to, I would say, at a minimum, be near a window. Just go to Home Depot, find a, in the painting section, get a nice huge tarp and drop off, set that down on the ground so you're not going to destroy your carpet, and then set up a card table, man. I think, um, what, what I was hoping to impart in my section was you don't need deluxe equipment or a, a, a specified space to do really cool stuff. There's a, very much a guerrilla building aspect to it. I think that you can start anywhere. You might want to investigate Peppacora too, because it's just cutting up paper and gluing it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that, that might be a good place to start. There's and it's a, cheap. I'm oh, sorry, there's another builder out there. Uh, her name is Svetlana. Uh, Svetlana Quint, uh, her uh, online handle is Kamui, K A M U I. She's in Germany and she works out of a one bedroom apartment as well. A lot of her processes are non toxic. She works with acrylic paints. Uh, she works with um, some expanding foams, but she does everything in a place with no garage and no big tools. Um, she uses electric carving knives and she uses paint like brushes, not spray paints. So it's, it's very possible to do that. You might try, uh, uh, try to find her blog, and she's got a lot of tips about working uh, out of a non-garage place. She does great video tutorials. Yes, she does. What was it, Svetlana Kane? Svetlana Quint. Actually, okay. just Google K-A-M-U-I Kamui Cosplay. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. No problem. Good luck. Um, I have uh, two questions, actually, sort of, um, they're related. Uh, the first is, uh, is it viable to work in metals? Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, depending upon what you needed to do. Uh, do you have a mill in the lane? Yeah. No. Um, what did you have in the lane, exactly? Can yeah, you well, I was uh, thinking of a, a rifle design. Uh, a friend of mine has been drawing up a few um, for uh, another panel. And um, parts of it, of course, would need to be weathered. I was thinking, um, and this leads into the second one, uh, if you could just sand it down to the metal, then it's an authentic look. Um, the other question is, would it be possible to like paint uh, a silver bottom or silver base and then paint uh, colors on top of it and sand down to the Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. What you're going to want to do for something like that is use uh, like 600 or 1000 grit wet sandpaper because you want to go through one layer of paint but not, not all the way down your yeah. base. So you're going to want something that's going to gradually wear the thing down. And to get an effect like that, um, either that or, or maybe uh, steel wool is done by um, aught, which is zero, so you're going to get quad aught steel wool, which is really, really fine, almost feels like cotton, and that'll do the same thing and kind of bring that down. Do you have something like that? Oh, yeah, if you want to learn to weld and grind metal bits, usually they're functional for some reason. If you need something to be very sturdy, mm -hmm. if you have a gun that you're going to carry around a convention, or try and get through airport security. Uh, <laughs> not recommended. Not it's recommended. Not it's it's going to be heavy. you got to carry it all day. If, it, if you need it for a function, then yeah, I use aluminum usually when yeah, I need metal. I, I was thinking. But if you need the look of steel, that can be faked so well with plastic, it's yeah. not worth the time to do it in metal. One of the things I picked up in the, the R2-D2 builders group, which, you know, R2 has a lot of metal parts on it, it, it unless it has to look like metal and function like metal. That's when you use metal. Anything else, right. you yeah. know, use something else. Yeah, that's, that was my plan. Yeah, cool. Thank nice. you. Uh, questions about helmets. Uh, specifically, if you wanted to make like a Halo ODST helmet, what kind of material would you use for the, the visor? Because you don't usually ever see them with it up. If you wanted to be able to wear it and see through it, mm -hmm. but have it only one way, or, or at least not shatter the person's face. Uh, like, like that. Like that. There's a, there's a couple yeah, of options. Well, yeah. well, specifically the ODST helmets, and I'm familiar with those, have a very funky sort of shape. Yeah, because it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. level. I've seen um, one person who took mirrored visors like the motorcycle helmet there and cut one section for the top and one section for the bottom. There's a slight gap between it, but you get a kind of good effect. Outside of that, it's going to be something you're going to be a vacuum forming yeah. machine for, which yeah. is going to add on a whole other level of complexity. Now, I made, a, I made a vacuum forming machine for about 100 bucks out of a dead toaster oven. Yep. Um, I have a, a yeah. I have a, an entry on my blog if you're interested. Um, it's made out of a, a toaster oven, some uh, kitchen drawer rails, uh, MDF, and, and wood. And I made it very cheaply, and it, it can do stuff like that. Um, 
vacuum forming is somewhat complicated, a little bit dangerous because you're working, you have to be comfortable with wiring up home circuitry, so 120 volt circuits, which is tricky and dangerous and potentially it caught fire when I was building it. Um, <laughs> but uh, that, it is possible. Um, the material is actually easy to find too. It's just yep. a mirror. It's a one. Is that two-way mirror or one-way? Well, one-way mirrored acrylic, but yep. uh, pulling acrylic is a lot harder than pulling PET plastic. Um, and PET plastic is what a home machine like the one I made is going to be able to do. Um, go to a website called Instructables.com. Is it Instructables? Is it? Is it? Yep. They have a bunch of uh, tutorials about how to build your own vacuum forming machine. I, I know I'm giving you a, like build this machine yeah, yeah, yeah. to build yeah, or this. Or outsource thing. it. Just have or, or you can outsource it. You'd have to make the buck, and then somebody else would build it for you. Okay. That's the best way to do it, come with advisor. Right, thank you. No problem. Good luck. Bring pictures next packs. Yeah. yeah. Bring your costume next packs. Yes. Yeah.